Tonight is November the 11th, 2015, and just I just had to do one more video because you guys, the way that re you responded and the videos that a couple of you guys have already made, thank you. I've, I've watched your videos, giving you thumbs up. I have learned from you, and I and and you you've made it much simpler than I did. I don't mean to make it complicated, but sometimes I do. It's not on purpose, but here's a VTVM right here. Same setup. Here's here's our bad capacitor right over here. Our point oh forty seven. That's our subject. And here's a new one. Here's the other two bad ones. I have them labeled here. But I'll show you what I have. I'm kind of duplicating some of yours, but it does work. And it's actually so much simpler than, than having to drag out a 20 microwatt meter movement and all that stuff. Watch this. Okay. Um, I'm going to crank up the voltage. Well, actually, I want you to see the voltage across it. This is the voltage coming out of, the, out of, the, uh, out of this power supply right here. If I crank it up, there's... 100, 200, 300, 400. 400 volts. Isn't that amazing? Right dead on. And there it is. There's the current flowing through it. This is nothing but um, a vacuum tube voltmeter, an old military one. Gorgeous instrument. But they hooked in series with the capacitor and the power supply, just like just like the the ammeter so you don't need a separate ammeter it'll work again this is on volt scale and you don't have to worry about hurting anything either I don't know why I made that so complicated earlier same thing here let's turn this thing off and instead of the um, vacuum tube bolt meter let's hook in a little analog one we got the polarity right here yep one, two, three, four. There's our 400 volts again. And uh, there it is. Our leaky capacitor. I want to focus there. Come on, camera. My God. There it is. Well, you can see it. So just simply put your capacitor in series with some high voltage, not too high, in series with a voltmeter. There are so many questions. The questions have been asked so many times, and we've all tried to resolve these problems so many times about how to test a capacitor. And see, and there's the, there's the 400 volts we have across it again. And that seems to be the simplest way. Now, with all that said, if you want to get a little fancier, you can use an ESR meter. And I got something a little interesting to show you here. Let's turn this thing off. And let's take this uh, 047 and um, first zero out our... Uh, ESR meter and put it across this guy reads uh, 31 ohms go okay what, what does that mean well if we compare it to a new one a new one measures 29 ohms hmm so is it good or bad well um, they're too, they're really too close to to uh, to know for sure. Let me show you something. I think all of you guys that watch my videos know Uncle Doug. He and I, whoops, he and I have known each other for some time here, and uh, a while back he made he empirically measured all of this data. These capacitors, he took these capacitors. And he measured the ESR on the same meter that I'm using. And here it is plotted. 
he gave me this data and I put it into an Excel spreadsheet and then plotted it. Well, a point zero forty seven should be about right zero four right there between zero four and zero five somewhere between thirty and twenty six ohms, as you can see. Well, the ESR meter, while it's really cool for electrolytic capacitors, and that's basically all they rate it for. Uh, see, they started here with uh, 0.1 microfarad. No, no, this is, I'm sorry, 0.1 ohms at 100, greater than 500 microfarads. Um, the smallest they have up here is 5 microfarads. So these guys right here are really good for evaluating um, electrolytic type capacitors, 5 microfarads and larger. Apparently they rate it between the range of 5 and 500, which is a pretty realistic range for the, the uh, devices we use today. But you cannot use this device to reliably measure one of a, uh, the signal level capacitors. It's just not going to work. They're just too close. Okay. Now let's turn our attention once more to this device, which I love to play with. And uh, <clears throat> since I've got everything hooked up, we'll look at a uh, a good capacitor. This is a. Uh, that's a point one. Let's don't use a point one. Let's use a point oh forty seven. Oh forty seven. And that would be about right there. Hit null. And our our dissipation factor is just so close to zero. Point zero zero one. It's like perfect. I won't go through the the formulas again. But if we put the defective one in here, and we know the capacitor is just a little bit. There it is. It's still the 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 value of the capacitor is still pretty darn close. But the dissipation factor is is worse. So while this is uh, the coolest instrument, its dissipation factor is uh, about 0 .027. 0 .027. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Well, it is. If the dissipation factor isn't virtually zero, then it's not very good. So they're all telling us that they're bad. So why do we spend so darn much time trying to evaluate a $2 capacitor? Well, good question. We want to know if they're bad. We want to know how to evaluate them. We a lot of times want to leave them in. Sometimes we want to intentionally use them. We seek them out sometimes. I mean, the obvious easy way out, if you're trying to make money at it, is just replace the darn thing. But if you really want to evaluate them, you actually can. But it's not as simple as uh, evaluating the resistance of a resistor. If you measure right here, here's another little device. If we measure uh, that capacitor, let's do that just for fun. Okay, you zero it out. Let me clip it on down here since I don't have enough hands to work with. And it says it's a. Oh, blast it. About a, a 46 nanofarad, that'd be a point zero four six. So it's right on. So the little capacitor, the little capacitor meter actually measures it okay. See, 40, 46 nanofarads. That'd be a point oh four six. Supposed to be a point oh four seven. So your capacitor meter says it's good. Your ESR meter says it's probably good. This instrument says, eh, I'm not so sure about that. This dissipation factor is a little higher, certainly higher than a brand new one. 
But the simplest of all is just put your voltmeter, whether it's a vacuum tube voltmeter. This thing is uh, 10 or 11 mega ohm input. This thing right here is, uh, I don't remember what it is, 5,000 ohms per volt DC. So you can figure it out on a 300 uh, volt scale. It would be 300 times 500. I mean 300 times 5,000. No, I'm sorry, it's right here. 10,000 ohms per volt DC. So it's pretty high, but it's, a, it's quite a bit lower than this one. So it would be 10,000 times 300. It would be 3 mega ohms. This one's 10. But they both provide enough of a current path, a DC current path, through the capacitor that you can test it. So if you love your old vintage capacitors so much, and you must test them, and you must know whether they're good or bad, even in the end, there's a tiny, slight judgment call. What if you detect maybe the ever, the ever so slightest amount of uh, meter movement? Maybe it's down in the nanoamps. Are you going to uh, say, well, that's it, piece of junk, throw it in a garbage can? Or are you going to say, well, you know, this thing is vintage and uh, this is what I actually want. And uh, I think I'm just going to keep it because I don't think it's bad enough yet. You know, another thing that's happening in my life is that uh, these capacitors and the parts that I have saved, I've saved many of them for 30 and 40 years or more. And at the time I saved them, they were all probably pretty good. Seems like many of them are still good. They've been in a reasonable environment for the last several decades. But they are aging, just like me. And in the next 20, 30 years, of course, I won't be around to uh, deal with them. I'll be gone by then. Um, they won't be any good, probably. You know, are they good at 40 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about 50 years? What about 60 years? 70, 80, 90, and 100. Well, these years pass by faster than... Uh, than we want them to, especially as we get older. And there you go. So you can evaluate your capacitors, uh, your signal level capacitors, but an ESR meter is, is the, this is not the best answer for them. And, and it does not advertise itself as such. Seems like a regular old voltmeter, a bit of high voltage, and putting the capacitor in your meter, your voltmeter in series with it, uh, tells you more about it than you probably uh, ever expected to know. And you can make a determination from there whether you want to keep the capacitor or replace it. Thanks, guys. I always appreciate uh, your feedback and your suggestions. It, it, it's just great. I love this group.